Okay, what I've done is I've gone through, I have a border design here. It's going all the way across on the bottom and the top. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've made swirls and curls inside of these triangles. They're the top part of the squares here and on the bottom I have the same thing. So once I've done the swirls and curls all along randomly placing them throughout the, the border, I'm going to come back and I'm going to put straight lines and the straight lines are going to look like this. Now, the reason I like to put the swirls and curls before the straight lines is so that they look more like the straight lines are behind them. So you don't want the straight lines to look like they interact with the swirl, which is what I have going on here. This looks like the swirl is behind the straight line and I'm trying to get the effect of the straight lines going behind the swirl so first you want to do your swirls and then you want to do your straight lines here's another one this one I tried to avoid it as much as possible but it's it's like the swirl is coming out from behind the straight lines this one right here is not too bad because I did the swirls first. Here's another one. You have the swirl coming in out of a straight line and it just doesn't give the appeal that I want to give. So go through and it's a, it's, it takes time to go through first and put all your swirls and your curls first but it comes out as a better overall design. See how these are? See here? We have our swirls and then our straight lines. It looks like the swirls on top. Right here it comes, it looks like it's on top of the straight lines. And that's kind of what you want to go for. I, you can go for the other look too, but I think this looks better where you have a full curled, rounded swirl. So see this swirl right here? I think this looks great. And I'll probably go in and do a little V here and a curve there and then do some straight lines around it. So let's go ahead and, and see how that works out. On these straight lines I'm just waiting until my foot gets right there and I'm just taking it down and then coming back up picking it up like this and following it over as soon as my foot gets to the edge of that other line I'll come down or go up make my next line so here's what we're talking about here. We don't want straight lines coming down into this. So we're going to do a curve. straight lines. So we want to keep our straight lines up here the same as they are down here. So you can either backtrack or you can break thread and start back over here. 
And I think that's what I'm going to do. Pull it stay stitches. Pull it up. Go ahead and trim it. And start back over here. Good spot. match this ruler up to the edge of the next line and then go down and then just keep going making sure that the top of the ruler is lining up with this and that it's straight now you just kind of have to follow the edge of your foot make sure it matches up with the top line and Stitching. This is not, you can't come in here and whip this stuff out real quick. Kind of pay attention to what you're doing. little spot here that needs a line. Let's go ahead and put that in there. You want to make it look as consistent as possible. Even though it's kind of a pain to go into that little tiny line, it helps. It helps with the effect of the straight lines. my machine on coast regulate which means that it will always be going up and down but the faster I go the faster the needle goes the faster the stitches come out so while it's on coast regulate it will be going up and down and I can slow that up or I can speed it up and go faster or slower um, I have it at the speed of nine sometimes speed of eight is good because it, it goes slower but if you have it always going up and down up and down it's easier to move the machine or at least that's what I think 